beautiful people. Welcome to The Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. We're back with another phenomenal episode. We are here with Mary I Inspire Evans. She is a business scalability detective, and we're going to solve the case today for you, beautiful people, because let me tell you something. She's phenomenal. She's fantastic, and she's going to be our detective for our businesses. So if you're looking to scale, you're looking to grow, you're looking to make it to the next level, you're in the right place. So I'm super pumped and excited. Thank you so much, Mrs. Mary. I inspire Evans for joining us on the Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. How you feeling today? I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be here, Dr. Shadi. Tell the people a little bit more about you. So my name is Mary. I inspire Evan. I will motivate and inspire anyone that will listen. That's my passion, right? Uh, I am from Pontiac, Michigan. I moved to Atlanta just two years ago. And when I came to Atlanta, Dr. Sade, I was crawling. Mm. Have you heard about the story in the caterpillar, how it crawls into the shell and has to emerge into something different? And when I came to Atlanta, it was right after the pandemic. Well, we're still in the pandemic. Dr. Sade, I had lost so much. My 401k, two businesses, and most of all, my confidence. I didn't believe in myself anymore. I had lost so much. So I'm excited to be here <laughs> and we I know better now. <laughs> we know better. And we're going to talk about that because I know there are so many people who are watching this where the, the, the pandemic was this transformational moment for you. It was a catalyst moment. Whether And that catalyst could have been something good for you or something not so great. So I'm, I'm glad that we're having this conversation because not only is she I inspires, she's the lady who bounces back. So let's talk a little bit about that. So you came, you relocated to Atlanta, talk about why you decided to relocate and after experiencing major loss. Yes. Well, I visit Atlanta often because my husband and mother was here. And in the midst of my downtime, I felt like I couldn't heal in the same place that I felt so broken. Mm. If you can understand that. I needed a new scenery, new people. I just felt like I was so broken in order to heal. I needed to see a new everything. So I talked with my husband. We packed up and Dr. Sade, uh, we do investments. So I have five homes in Michigan. And when I say I lost everything, I downsize everything in my life, my home, my cars, my money, <laughs> my everything. So when we decided to come to Atlanta, we had to sit and say, OK, when you're going through things, you have to be creative and think outside the box. Right. So, Dr. Sade, when I say be creative at that time, my husband business closed, my business closed. So we like literally had very little income coming in. But thank God when I was making money, I saved a lot of money. So I was pulling from 401k. I was pulling from my bank account. I was pulling. I even pulled from my life insurance. You know, you could build wealth up in your life insurance. I even pulled down from my life insurance. But what I did know is when we made it to Atlanta, we had to live somewhere, right? You want to hear my story? Oh, we want to hear this story. I want, and I want you to let them know, like, <laughs> when you lost businesses, these were seven-figure businesses. Yes, yes. Millions. Yes. With an S. I say from rag, from riches to rags, right? Mm. And everyone has a different definition of what riches to rags mean. For some, they would look at me and say, how could she say from riches to rags? Because I still was able to hold on to my investment properties. Mm. I was this short of selling. And I say, God, whatever you do, don't let me have to sell off investments because I believe in generational wealth and leaving a legacy. That's so important to me and my investment, my properties and my land is what's for my future generation. So I have a five-year-old grandson. He started his own business, five lemonade stand. Then we went to selling products. So he had a nice bank account. When I say I went and took from everything but land, Dr. Sade will really broke me. Mm. Sorry. It's when I took his money. Mm. Mm. So I knew something had to change, right? Because we had been saving that money since he was five. And I would take him to the bank and he was too short to, they knew mm. him, Mr. G. And I would show him how to fill out the stuffs and we would, he would push the, his little deposit slip after every event. Because I have a nonprofit called Young Entrepreneur Squad Foundation. So I started teaching children how to do business. I had 20 under my wing before mm. 
the pandemic and they have some amazing businesses. Some of them make their own jewelry. They have clothing lines and those children work with me. And then the pandemic happened. So when that happened for the first time in my life, I experienced um, depression and anxiety. Mm. So um, once I came to Atlanta, that's why I said I was so broken and I needed new everything. So I had employees that had worked for me for 21 years. Dr. Sade, I can't make this up. I came down looking for property. I started following a guy on Facebook called Julian Gordon. Mm -hmm. You know, Julian, Mm -hmm. before I moved to Atlanta. So I started learning about triplex homes because I only invested in single family homes. Mm. Julian, and I haven't met him personally yet, but I have to. He really helped save my life. Once I started this program and I learned about triplex homes and living rent free, I was four weeks, maybe eight weeks. And you know, when you're in trouble, I knew my last business was closing Mm. because I had three. So I had to, when you are resilient, you think outside of the box. I said, okay, Julian says, buy a triplex and live rent free. And that our money wasn't coming in. I needed to do that. So I came to Atlanta. First, I talked to my employees, been with me 20, some 18 years, 20 years. I needed to boost my income because in the last part of the, when the pandemic, I couldn't pay myself. Mm. I made sure my employees was paid. Y'all know business on this. Mm. We don't get paid. Mm-hmm. I went to four of them. I said, I need to boost my income to close a deal in Atlanta. My four employees gave me their paychecks for eight weeks. <sighs> Dr. Sade, I boost my income. I came down. I closed on a triplex. A and C pay my mortgage and I live in unit B for free. Mm. So when I tell you all of the season that I planted, when I made money, I always help anyone that was less fortunate than myself. When I closed the deal on that triplex, that was my last check from my last business. Mm. I want to, we got to, we got to break this down. Okay. Because part of, I've never heard you tell the story in this way. And part of what you really illustrated for me, and I hope for the audience as well, is you were a store. You, you prepared for hibernation. You prepared for a season of when it was barren because you were storing up your nuts. You were making sure you had them in different locations. Even the baby had had a little aside, you know, he had his money, the 401k. You talked about insurance. I need people to understand that you was prepared, even though it didn't look like it. It it did not. It did not feel like it. Mm -hmm. But you were able to pull from different reserves. Because you were a storer. You stored at it like that, Dr. Shade. During the harvest. So that when it when it we go into hibernation, it's wintertime. We think about animals and they go into hibernation, yes. but before they hibernate, they gotta store food for the winter. Absolutely. And when the winter came, COVID for you, yes, you were able to go back and look at what you had stored. And even though you may have felt like there's a guilt and a shame, and this is why I encourage her so much. I was like, you got to tell this story to people. You stored. And you know, Dr. Shade, mm. I hear you say mm. I stored. But I was just so disappointed that I had to pull from my store. It wasn't for that. It was for building, building generational wealth building a legacy. And so I guess I spent so much time in the beginning feeling so bad and feeling like I I had failed. And when you're going through that, you don't see the positive things that's there. And that's why when you introduced me as the scalability, business scalability detective, it wasn't until I became a detective in my own life, Mm, mm. my own life, looking up under every rock, thinking back, how did I start my first business, attract my first client and make my first million? You see, my business had became, I was my business and it wasn't to one night and it didn't happen overnight. It took three years and I laid in the bed one night and just started reminiscing over my life. And I say, business is in me. Mm. I'm creative. I'm resilient. I'm giving, I'm caring, I'm faithful. And I knew that I could come back from this, right? So Dr. Sade, we needed to save more money. We had two trucks. I started a rental business. We put our vehicles on Turo. So now we live free. We drive free. Mm. Insurance is paid on the property and the 
vehicles for free. And Dr. Sade, here we are now two years later, and we're getting ready to close on one of our biggest deals. And the bounce back is real. And I and I'm so passionate about telling the story because I know it's so many of us out there that just can't see the bounce back. And you have to move when you don't see it. And sometimes things happen on top of each other. Dr. Sade, I was in the midst of coming back. I felt like I could see the light. I said, OK, I have this. Mm. And then my brother was killed. Dr. Mm-hmm. Sade. I said, I can't do this. I can't keep. And 48 hours, I lost my best friend, my brother, and my fur baby of 14 years in the midst of me trying to bounce back. To bounce back. So I say, God, what is this? How can I not share my story? How can I not? Because I know it's somebody out there need to hear it. And they know that the bounce back is real and it can happen. Mm. And I want them. Let me tell you a little story about the detective. When you start becoming a detective in your own life, in your own business, give you power, mm. resilience, because you have to go back to where it started. And when you have been as successful as I have, I've generated over $12 million in business revenue. If you go back to where you started and I look at where I'm at today, I'm blessed. I'm mm. blessed. So the business scalability detective is really deep for me. As I roll out my six-month program, 12-month program, when they come into the program, they are SBIs, scalability business investigators Mm -hmm. for their own business and their own life. So I want to create these SBIs that will be a private detective for themselves in their personal life and in their business. And as we grow as a group, I want these SBIs to be a part of a community where depending on what you specialize in, I can refer clients to you because you're a certified SBI. Woo! That is a lot to unpack. I know we don't got the tissues ready for today's episode. And I hope that that was something that your heart and your soul needed that you're going to bounce back. And what I heard was this was a job season for you. And you bouncing back and it multiplied. And the story of Job, when, it, when everything, he was still faithful. He didn't give up. He wanted to, let's be clear. But the, the multiplication. So the next part of that metamorphosis of that going into the cocoon and coming out on the other side as a butterfly is multiplication. Yes. And you don't know what it's going to look like. Mm-mm. That's why you are so afraid because we want to know what the other side looks but you can't know if you if you've never been down that road, you'll never know what the other side looks like. And guess what happens? People turn around. They get afraid. They get irritated because they don't know what the other side look like. But I'm going to tell you what helps you jump and leap when you don't know what the other side look like mm. is know your why. My why is my kids, kids, kids. So I'm jumping in without a parachute. Don't know what it's going to look like. Because I have to, I have my why. And when I took that last $10,000 off my grandbaby account, which will go back in this year, mm. and have his 30000 back, mm. I cried like a baby. And my sister said, Mary, he was, was seven. Days. She said, he don't even know that money is in there. But mm. I'm going to tell him the story, Dr. Shada. You know why? I'm a superhero. I want him to know even superheroes have challenges. Even superheroes hit what we can, for, it was rock bottom for me. What's rock bottom for you might mm-hmm. not be rock bottom for me. But once I took my grandbaby money, it was rock bottom for me. You understand? Mm. That's why we don't judge. When a person say, that's not rock bottom, it was rock bottom for me. And that's all that mattered is how did I feel about it? Mm -hmm. You you opened up this conversation that I know you have with women and leaders about being superheroes and what we need to do when it's time to take off that cape. Let's talk about that. Dr. Sade, I wore that cape all my life. Mm. I am a recovering perfectionist because I was the oldest child and I, my parents was in college going to school and working. I, 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 I was that mother and I loved every moment of it, though, Dr. Sade. Mm. I was cooking, washing clothes, helping with homework. I was 10 years old. So I took that cape into my adulthood. All my life, I wore the cape. I was always the one to protect her, to help her. And I loved every bit of it. But what the what the pandemic did show me is that what I was doing is sacrificing my own health, Mm. sacrificing my everything to take care of others. And they say sometimes things happen for a reason and you just can't figure it out. I can say to you that 
It was a lot of loss in the pandemic, but it was a lot of good things happened too because I found myself. Mm. I found who I was. I learned boundaries. I learned to say no without feeling guilty, without feeling guilty, right? Mm-hmm. People would call me a workaholic, Dr. Sade, and I would get upset. I'm not a workaholic. Man, your own business. What I do, I love doing it. And you can love doing it to, uh, to it hurt. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So the pandemic showed me that, Mary, it's time to take off that cape, set some boundaries, love, learn to say no. And it's the best thing that could have happened to me because I work, 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 work. Mm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So now I want to make money, help others, but I don't have to do it like that. God showed me another way. I don't have to do it like that anymore. I want a few clients that's coachable, available and teachable and serious. And that's all I want. Let's talk about this other side. So you've bounced back and you're working on this bounce back yes. closing deals. You say you're working on the biggest deals already done. By the time this yes. episode, we're going to yes. say we yes. claim it. It's yes. already done. And you talk. And I know there are some different things that are in your future of how you want to work with entrepreneurs. So they have this level of bounce back and resilience that you have. So talk a little bit more about how you work with people and how you're supporting them as the business scale scalability detective. Well, first of all, by going into your business, and just seeing where are you at right now? Mm. Where are you at right now? What are your goals? What are your mission? And does it really align with what you really want? Or are you doing something that somebody else wanted you to do? You understand? Mm. Sometimes we don't have clarity to what we really want. And you could never scale a business without clarity because it's chaotic. And if you're not clear, I guarantee you, your employees are not clear Mm. because they don't know where you're trying to go. If you don't know, they don't know. So the first thing, let's come in and let's get clear. Let's investigate you first. Where's your mindset? Mm. Do you have a growth mindset, a scaling mindset? Because we think we do and we don't always have that. You understand? Mm -hmm. So my thing is, let's start with you first. You know, I graduated from an amazing program, Lisa Nichols, Mm -hmm. uh, certified transformational training program. And it starts with you. You cannot transform someone else's life or business if you have not been transformed. Transformed. And remember, we're always transforming. It never stops. It never stops. We always living we always learning we always transforming and that is one thing people say in the midst of whatever you was going through why did you join lisa's program because i need i needed to transform myself i needed to learn who i was what made me click what made me do the things i do what makes me so resilient what made me think outside of the box what made me creative when things happen and when something does happen Sometimes we spend so much time, why me, why me, why me, why me? And that's the first time in my life I had ever sit that long X and why me is during the pandemic. Mm. Typically, when something happened to me, I sit down at the table. I'll be like, how are we going to figure this out? What mm-hmm. do we have to do? And it took me almost two years. And you see, I did. I'm like, OK, I'm moving to Atlanta. I'm not going to pay rent. I'm living for rent free. I'm not going to pay for a car note. I'm not paying for car insurance. Because once you get back to who you are, that creative Mind start rolling, you like, and she got this. <laughs> I'm just listening to this story in amazement. I remember, I'm like, you gotta tell this story. You gotta <laughs> tell people they need to hear this because we're in a season where people are need yes. encouragement, yes, and they need support. And the the things that you've gone through, the mentors. That's how we got connected. Yes, through the Lisa Nichols community. I'm so appreciative. Yes. Shout out to all of our yes uh, Shout community out members. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. you guys are the bomb. Yes. <laughs> dot com. And you just mm-hmm. decided to make an investment in yourself. And one of the things that when Lisa's talking about transformation is that prior the prerequisite to transformation is agitation. Ooh. And I didn't know that. And I said, oh, that's why I don't like this feeling. Come on. That's now. why we mad and upset and aggravated. Because in order to transform, let's talk a little bit more about that. Transformation. Irritation. You're you going to be irritated, aggravated, mad and cranky. Yes. Let's talk about that. And what happens when you, the closer you get to your goal, the more irritated you get, the Ooh. more afraid you get. And mm. it's natural for us to want to turn around and go back the other way. Oh, I can't do this. 
We have that patrol board in our brain that says, who do you think you are and what are mm. you doing? Mary, you can't do that. Oh my God, if you don't turn around now, you're going to lose everything. You know that property you were talking about, you didn't want to sell. Well, you're getting ready to sell it if you keep going. And that's all to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. So we think, right? And that's when we talk about not knowing what's going to happen if you keep going. But that's your sign to keep going. When mm. it's like a pressure cooker cooking, you know, the mm. steam and the top. It's when you know you should keep going because transformation is a scary thing. Oh, say that one more time. I, transformation I, is a scary thing mm -hmm. because even if you are, uh, I use the example, you can have a woman being beat every night by her husband. And she will stay there rather than to leave and not mm -hmm. know what's, what's the else? unknown. Mm -hmm. Because I do know here that I'm he might hit me three or four times a week, but I'm going to my bills paid. I have some groceries. The key is OK. And it's that comfort zone that kills us. Mm. The comfort zone kills us. And we have to learn to keep going. I went, I'm going to share something. I was speaking to a, a friend yesterday. She said, Mary, how do you keep going? Especially if you want to know how close I was to my brother. Mm. Dr. Sade, it was times I couldn't get out of bed, couldn't do anything. And I woke up one day. I said, OK, if I do one thing a day towards my goal, just one, mm. that's 30 things a month. Mm. People don't do that on a good day, on a good month. So I told myself, wake up in honor of him, do one thing a day. Mm. Every day I worked on this business scalability detective. And when I tell you I'm going to come on the stage with my detective, my magnifying glass, mm -hmm. my briefcase, and come in your business looking for clues and investigating where we leaving money on the table. Oh, we need a whole, we need a, a badge. We need a, we doing we it. Need we props. doing it. Dr. Coming. Shelley, we doing it. To the girl, your brand's a big deal conference. Girl, I was, uh, I was went on looking for the car, you know, Madlock. You ever mm -hmm. was it? I told my husband, I said, man, I think I need me an old school car. So when I pull up, I had a little old 70s. These... <laughs> we need all the Business props. This scalability detector. That's me. I, I love this. What is next for you? What's next for me, Dr. Shade? Like I said, it's building the SBIs. I'm so excited about this whole, whole idea, but I am thanks to you. And I love this whole, uh, is it the TSP? And mm -hmm. just, I said, I spent a hundred thousand dollars buying friends and being in the right rooms. Honey, mm. let me tell you, sometimes you have to pay to be where you need to be or to get around the people you need. As broke as I was, Dr. Shade, 800 credit score, right? But I had those credit cards. I sit back, I say, why is you worried about an 800 credit score when you won't even touch the credit cards? Girl, let me tell you, I put them cards out the best thing I could have ever did mm. because we have to pay to play sometimes. Mm. You have to pay to play sometime. And see, a lot of people want to play, but they don't want to pay. You understand? What I'm a saying? lot of people want to play, but, but they, they don't, don't want to pay. pay. Let's say that one more again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so once I said, okay, I'm going to do this, you find a way to do anything that you want to do. So when they sitting in the room, oh, I can't mm. afford this. Why is it $15,000? Because I spent $100,000 learning what I'm trying to teach to you. Mm. And that's another thing I know my worth now. We're not lowballing nothing mm -mm. I do from this day forward. And you and being in your community has really taught me that. And and uh, Lamar came to one of your mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. So some people say, oh, they don't have $15,000. Well, you're not my client. Because mm. I'm going to deliver. Go over and aboard. We're not. I'm going to deliver. Because I gave a lot of money away and didn't get the delivery. So ooh, learn ooh. my experience now. Mm. I see. Guess what happens? You say. That I'm not going to do. What we're not going to do. What is we're that. not going to do is take your money and not deliver. We've been talking about integrity conversations during in this podcast, mentorship and coaching. You over deliver that. every, I mean, over deliver every chance, anything you find out that you think gonna help. You're going to send a messenger. You're going to call. You're going to do whatever it takes. We're going to send a bird call. We send in pigeons. Like, we send it you got to You got to know what's going on. We have to know. So I'm just excited to be in the community, be I'm around like-minded people and know that I'm in the right place at the right time. I love it. So tell our audience in the, in the camera, your camera, yes. your name, introduce yourself again, and why your brand is a big deal. My name is Mary I Inspire Evans, your business scalability detective. And my brand is a big deal. Because my brand is not just about me. It's about how many lives I can inspire, motivate, and impact and build my SBIs, which stands for Scalability Business Investigator, which is you. And how can we together impact other lives and businesses? Because it's about leaving a legacy, building generational wealth, and our kids, kids, 
kids in Beyonce's voice. I love it. Yes. Thank you so much, Mary. I inspire Evans. And ladies and gents, this is the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal conference. I mean, this is the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. But since we're talking about the conference, yes, might as well go we want to see you June 6th through the 8th in Charlotte, North Carolina for the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal conference. If you thought that this episode was powerful, transformational, and phenomenal, meet Mary live. She's one of our speakers at the conference. Yes. We want to see you get your tickets before the tickets sell out. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be amazing. If you are someone who's building a six figure and beyond personal brand as a coach, expert, and speaker, you need to be at the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal conference. And we can't wait to see you in the next episode of Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. See you later. And I'll see you there. And we'll see you there. Thank you. Conference.